and CNTL subsidiary of the railroad. Been with them since 1999. It's been an uh, interesting adventure. Um, in September of 2013, met up with Ed at a recruitment and retention seminar where I actually met Jay Womack and Dan Baker. And it was worth me sticking around on the second day in the afternoon to find out about Trinity because it was the right step for us uh, on a company, company level. It uh, simplified things for us. On my end, my role is HR, recruiting, uh, compliance, safety, termination, orientation. I do. I got 70 guys I'm responsible for in the uh, Atlantic provinces in Canada. That simplified things considerably. Shortened our orientation and worked out nicely. Great. So, what were you doing before you went to online training? What? How were you doing safety training? Uh, what would happen is we recently uh, acquired some laptops. We do uh, some PowerPoints and that. And when drivers had to do some uh, remedial training or something after the fact, they'd uh, take the DVDs and watch them, or do it on the lap, one of the laptops. Um, then do a paper quiz. Everything was uh, on paper. And, um, it's, it was a three-day process to do orientation prior to Infinity. So, what what led into you deciding to go to the Infinity program? Um, my boss likes to be cutting edge on a lot of things. Uh, he wanted to simplify things. He wanted to get rid of some paperwork. We recently digitalized our files, and this was the next step in evolution for us. Uh, at the retention seminar, uh, listening to Jay uh, Womack talk about this, it was, it was a no-brainer. Uh, I stuck around, got some more information, actually talked to Ed, Luke, his partner, uh, some of your other previous customers, and uh, it made sense uh, for us to do this. So with, with the online training, what challenges did you face within your company when you went to roll it out? Change in culture. That's the big thing. Um, I get, we've got a fleet of 1,050 owner operators with an additional three to 400 uh, drivers that work for them. And how do you get owner operators to do something? We, we made it simple. We gave it to them, we emailed them what they needed to do, we explained it, we gave them the, our driver flyer with the toll-free number if they need assistance. They went in, we did the whole fleet on one test uh, module, see how they would like it and what kind of turn times it took. And uh, it went well. And it's simple. When we set it out, we give them their timelines. If they don't get it done, we'll get on them for a little while. If that doesn't work, they won't get a dispatch till it's done. <laughs> That's the last resort, right? <laughs> so, from a from a complete company level, how did you introduce it to everybody? What what did you do to make them aware? Um, it well, it just so happened to fall. We were switching from a BlackBerry to an iPad as a communication device to go to other forms of electronics for their monthly maintenance and that. So we actually have an app on our iPad. That's called CNTL Safety Training. You click on the app, <coughs> it actually brings up the Infinity homepage. Uh, drivers all have their logins, and they go in, do their things. They can actually do it at a customer while being paid. So it works out good for them. How many classes do you assign either, if, how many classes do you assign and kind of what interval do you assign them on? Um, I'll start from the beginning when we get a new owner operator coming in. Uh, we'll have them do two modules prior to coming into orientation. Our orientation was cut from three days to one day. We focused on in our orientation on what they need to know right now. What gets them by, what, what's the important stuff. Then we set up a 15 week training pro, uh, program after the fact. They get one module per week for the next 15 weeks. That's the way they cut our orientation down. You know, come the second day, they're glossy-eyed, look at you, and you're thinking, okay, are you understanding what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it gets long. And it's long for us and a time commitment. Um, and it saved us lots of money. 
Now, are you are you paying your drivers uh, anything to do the train? Thirty bucks an hour, depending on uh, what the union contract contract states. So, an owner operator at that point, you know, they're getting three hundred bucks to sit with me for the day to do an orientation. If it was three days, it was nine hundred dollars. If I had to rent the facility, I had to cost the meals on top of that. Um, it could add up quickly. We, we, we saved a considerable amount of money in uh, shortening it. Just want to open it up to the floor. Does anybody have any questions so far, Sheldon? Mario, uh, do you find you have a lot of admin to manage? Like that's a lot of people to manage. So is it is it a problem? Because every time we have a database somewhere, we have multiple databases, like for drug testing and this that and the other thing. And man, it's you know sometimes it's really hard to. It, Um, reduced my workload considerably because in the past everything was on paper, uh, giving them the video, line up a, the laptop or whatever they needed. Whereas now I assign it, they know the deadlines. I get a report weekly if they haven't completed it, I follow up with them and it's in their system and I can move it over into their driver file at my convenience. So you got everything pretty well automated, so you're not kind of forced to be managing it. That's kind of what I'm afraid of is, is, is you know, having to be, I want to be, a, I want something really simple because I'm just a simple guy. <laughs> <laughs> that makes two of us, actually. Um, being that my role's so diverse, I want things as simple as possible as well. I assign it to them, I let them know what's coming, they'll get the email, and uh, they log in, do their business, and I get results, and uh, can uh, save the copy of the, their test into the file, into their file, and I can save a copy of their certificate right into their uh, safety file. And, uh, their files. Mario, uh, do you find that some of your older operators aren't computer savvy, and just have you had that where the older guys don't even have email? That I do. Out of the thousand fifty owner operators, there's two of them that don't have email, and I manage the two. Um, those guys, show them once or twice, they get onto it. The Infinity system is actually pretty simple for the user. They log in, they see what, what they have, they, pro, they do what they need to do. You know, the guys have choices. They can do it on the iPad, they can do it on their phone, they can do it sitting in front of the TV on their laptop, uh, do it in, at home. It's their choice where they want to do it and when they want to do it as long as it meets our timelines. So do you facilitate for, let's say, somebody like a laptop at your office where they can come and log in? We've issued iPads to all our owner operators. Oh, okay. So they've got they have it. And if they need one, I've got a, a training room that has some laptops in it that they can, uh, they can come and uh, use it in there. Okay. Thanks. Good question. Any other questions so far? They still pay thirty dollars an hour to do it, or that was previous. For their orientation, we pay them for that. If it's risk mitigation or uh, something where they where they've done something wrong and it's a form of risk mitigation, they uh, they do it on their time. Uh -huh. So like that that course, fifteen week course. The no, the fifteen week course they can do it at that point. It's one video a week for fifteen weeks. So if they're sitting at a customer, and you know, a customer says, hey. Uh, I'm going to be an hour offloading. You know, go sit in your truck, and they can at that point get paid to do the video, or they can do it at home, right? It's still paying them. Yeah, we're paying them for a different reason, but right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. it's their choice. If they want to be efficient with their time, I know what I'd be doing. Yeah. Mary, Mary what what do you have? What's the two prerequisite um, courses you have to do before they actually? Uh, we get them to do uh, fuel economy training and our terminal video because uh, dealing with the intermodal terminals, there's a lot of heavy equipment, there's there's a lot to learn. We, we go through it again in the orientation, but we wanted to give them something small to start off to get them used to it. And then nothing, if, if they didn't do it, it wouldn't be the end of the world because we, we cover it off anyways, but it's... It tells me when it's done, when the drivers come, they're they're interested, they're keen to work. Like a driver turnover, I have a very, very low driver turnover, probably about four percent. So 
it's because you pay for the right to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because you have online training. <laughs> well, we're a different type of carrier. Like earlier, I heard people talk about having the drivers out four to six weeks. Our drivers, a majority of our fleet, are home every night sleeping in their own bed. In my case, I get Newfoundland, they, they're gone for two to three days at a time, but they're back home. Uh, in Moncton, they might be out one night. And then the other piece is behind when guys are gone, guys can pull it out of Calgary into the up in Paris and that, they might be two days gone. It's, uh, the rest of them they come to the terminal, they have a start time, and away they go. Now, as far as managing the program day to day, are you the one managing it for? Um, there's 16 of us, six is my boss, and then there's 16 of us at the same level. I manage it for my drivers. Uh, I sign what I need. Uh, my colleagues do the same thing. Uh, they sign what they need for their drivers. And then we each manage our own terminal. If they need assistance, obviously I'll uh, help them out. Uh, and we have awesome support from uh, Vertical Alliance and with Jeannie. She, uh, we have a request and she helps us out as quickly as she can. So it's not a, I'll get back to it next week. It's usually same day or the following morning. From a reporting standpoint, do you have the system set up kind of automatically where it sends you reports on drivers that have not completed so you know who to target? I won't say it's automatic because there's a manual process in there that Junie helps us out with. If it's not Junie, it's Ed. Uh, we get a weekly report on complete and incomplete reports. Uh, it's an Excel spreadsheet uh, for each one. And it gives you the date that the, if it's in, the incomplete report, it gives us the date when we do what the module was, who the user was, the whole thing. On the complete report, that's where we draw our certificates from. We'll go in there, draw them, and put, drag them over into our uh, digital files. Now, you mentioned you use the system for orientation. Do you use just completely vertical line screen content? Do you have your component content? We. Or our orientation, we actually use none of your content. We use our own content. Um, the only piece of your content we use at this point in time is the, the Canadian Hours of Service uh, and the U.S. Hazmat as well. Uh, the rest of it is our own content. So after being here, I think you may be looking at a bit more of your content because our stuff, some of it's dated and it's, our videos are a little longer because they were used in a classroom format, you know. Driver's got a 20, 25 minute video and then he gets a dozen questions afterwards. The retention rate, you know, you're watching that video a couple times. As has your, uh, with your own custom content, is it videos, is it PowerPoints, is it documents? It's a combination of all three. We have uh, some videos. We've made some of our own, some of it's JJ Keller, uh, some of it's through other sources. We have our own PowerPoints and we have our own documents. All our policies are available to them. The one thing that we did is in the resource section of the uh, Infinity, we all our, everything, our whole content's available to them at any point in time. There's no strings attached when they go look at it. There's no quiz. There's no tracking on my side. We have a, a weight limits because in Canada we're, we're running, running tridents. We're up to 104,500 pounds in the part of the country and other parts of the country, that same equipment, 100,000, 100, 100,000, 100, 100,000, 100, The driver needs to know, if I'm picking up a load in point A, I'm going to point B, what's the weight limit? Because my guys in the east can pick up 104,500, but the load's going to Manitoba, it's 100,100, so they get 4,000 pounds less, so they get a load according. And that's a resource that they have at their fingertips. One of the other things that we've done. Oh. I was just going to ask, are you using it, or, or is, your, is your company using it for anything other than driver training? Like, have you got HR stuff, that, like some of the stuff we talked about in the presentation? Have you been able to expand it beyond the online training? Uh, not, at this point in time, we haven't, because we've been uh, starting to evolve in that. Uh, we, we're just looking at an online application now. Everything was paper prior to this, right? right. And we have. 
the 19 department with 800 people in it. Uh, 800? Yeah, for CN. With 800 people, so. We got five. You're <laughs> 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 <Fear> efficient. <laughs> our, so we have apps on our iPad for accidents, for monthly maintenance reports, so it's tied in. It's not the same app, but it's the same uh, device that they're going to use, right? You started doing dispatcher assignments. Yes, we have. Um, back in June, we had a meeting with all my colleagues and all the dispatch managers. So we, we brought it up. I did a short presentation about Infinity, and uh, they wanted to uh, have the dispatchers go through some of the training. Uh, for example, the hours of service we go through uh, the infinity hours of service because ours is more of a hands-on training. You know, doing a PowerPoint on hours of service on a device isn't the easiest. Versus, you know, the, the way you, you put it out there is very interactive and it's comprehensive. One of the other things we've done <coughs> with it is we have four, uh, three safety meetings a year with the whole fleet. In the past, we'd. Uh, gather everybody together in a room such as this, we'd have our meeting, we'd have a video, and we'd you know, do a quick quiz and the guys would be on their way, right? we will talk about different safety things. What we've done recently is we gave them the video one week prior to the, uh, the meeting on Infinity. They go through the, the required uh, module, they do the quiz, we have our meeting, we talk about it for five, 10 minutes, review it, it shortens our time, it keeps the meetings more interesting, the drivers aren't phasing out, they're not, the it's, topics are relevant at that point. They're not watching a 40 minute video or a 20 minute video on something that uh, is reviewed at that point. So we found it worked rather well. Next phase for us potentially, in our orientation currently, all our quizzes and our policies are on paper. Uh, I was talking to Ed about this previously, is potentially putting our quizzes on the iPad as a quiz only document. We would assign it to them previous to the orientation. During the orientation, we'd watch the video in the group on, you know, DVD player or whatever, and then they would go through the quiz after the fact of the infinity. It's cut down on paper, everything's electronic. It's a, it's a, it's the next step for us. Fantastic. Any, any other questions? All right, I just got a, a couple more questions for you. Hey, so, sorry. Question oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> my, my timing sucks. Like, I'm really sorry. Uh, did you do any kind of uh, reaching out, you know, like doing a survey to get feedback from, from the guys about what they liked and didn't like? Did, did you get any kind of, you know, sort of grassroots? Because uh, that's what I was thinking it would be ideal to be able to, you know, after about three months, get, you know, get a uh, what, what we like, what we don't like, that sort of feedback? Officially, no. Uh, we don't Lots of unofficial stuff, though, right? Yeah, we, we, I talk to the guys. Uh, I try to make a point when the guys come in, talk about different things, because we have a lot of reviews with the drivers when they start, first start. Like, after day one, come see me. After the first week, come see me. After three weeks, come see me. Uh, we talk about different things, things they like, things they don't like. Uh, and I talk about infinity, because I'm learning about it as, as, as we go, and ask her, what do you think of the system? Does it work for you? Does it not work? Is it something that, uh, you know, versus sitting in a room for three days with me, and having my colorful personality, it's, uh, <laughs> it could be, uh, you know, it's You're so really far. Stacking the deck there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so far, it's been pretty good uh, feedback. You're always going to get the naysayers, right? You, you can, you know, no matter what you do, there's always, you're not going to make everybody happy. Uniform. Yeah, the uniformity. What we've done on, on a, what's changed for us is we had a PowerPoint for our presentation and it was supposed to be three days. Some of my colleagues would squeeze it into two days. And, you know, the guys would be in for super long days. And now the orientation's six to eight hours, depending on the size of the group and the comprehension of the, the group. And, Everybody from coast to coast is running the same thing. The U.S. program is a tiny bit different. Uh, the content's different, but the idea is the same. Uh, 
it's more U.S. orientated. Uh, we use actually the infinity hours of service for the U.S. and uh, our U.S. contents. Okay. Sorry, on, on Tracker, I go from three days to one day. So, is that Infinity that's let you do that? Yeah, because of the four, uh, the fifteen week. Uh, oh, okay. Module. So, okay. So, I, I'm yeah. going to say you're not covering the same three day material in one no. day somehow. It's just We're covering day. the crucial stuff. Right. Uh, Might not be the right word to use, but in a lot of safety, there are videos and that there's a lot of, of uh, fluff. Like there's the when you're hiring, like in our case, it's different. We hire guys with experience. We don't want to train them how to drive. They're coming to us driving already. I don't want to. All I want to do is review their information. I want. I don't want to train them. I want them to review it and show me they know what the information is. And sitting with them for three days. With experienced drivers, it actually was an impact on us hiring because it was they knew they'd sit with us for three days and you know versus being out on the road two days earlier and making money. Like it, sure, thirty bucks an hour works, but when when the wheels are turning, they're making real money. All right, my last question, and I want to see if there's my last question is basically: you've been on the program for eighteen months. If you had to restart the program today, what's the one thing you would tell yourself versus starting it 18 months ago? That's the, if we were to restart, uh, look at a little bit more of your content instead of being stuck on our stuff. Uh, you know, with the, your selection of content so big, I think that might have been part of it. It might have been a little intimidating. All of a sudden, looking through it, email with 150 or 200 different pieces of content versus, okay, we have this, it works, we know what it is, there's a lot of time commitment in the sure. That's something we might be doing a little bit differently. Okay. Yep. Um, because I was part of the implementation of the program, I think this is relevant to Um, the rollout went along with our iPads, right? So when the iPads were ready, we did a general meeting with the guys at the safety conference and uh, it was introduced at that point. Uh, we held off on the handing the iPads to some people purposely to see how it would go in some of the different terminals. We targeted some different terminals, targeted by terminals because I was there to help the guys out. It wasn't something... Uh, you know, some of my colleagues are, aren't tech savvy, or so it worked out that uh, we were up to speed faster than expected. To be honest. Nice, great. Thanks. Um, the iPad app. You did that in house. You got 800 IT guys, so I assume you did it in house. But what about supporting that? From what I understand, from what Pam told me, on her iPhone she has the Infinity mobile app. Okay, so I'm just thinking in terms of, of, you know, that would be something that I think we'd all be interested in, but we don't have a... Sure, and we'll actually talk about this tomorrow. It's not really an app, it's a shortcut that right. you can put the icon on your phone, and that's actually part of tomorrow. We'll show you how to do that. And it's just an easy way of putting it there, clicking a button, and, and you have Infinity on your, your phone or, or iPad. One of the nice things about the uh, Infinity, it doesn't matter what you're doing it on, it could be... Uh, iPhone, a Samsung, a tablet, a big screen TV at home, it still works. It's not relevant to, you need this device to get it done. It's, you just need a browser. Right? You need a, a browser and a, even with a slow internet connection, it works because it uh, adjusts the uh, quality of the, uh, of the uh, megapixels. So maybe we can work in my room because I think I got the room with the slowest the slowest internet connection I've ever had in a hotel in like the last 10 years. <laughs> we are in the Wild West. I think I can hear the screech of the photo. <laughs> 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 any, any other questions?
questions for Mario. <laughs> yeah. Going once, going twice, and last question is without putting um, ballpark as you're going through this kind of journey and your uh, implementation rollout and usage, you've seen an increase in usage fleet-wide. Uh, if you could put a percentage on how much time, because I don't know how familiar you, or if you've explained, but with CN, what they do is they have terminal managers. So every table here would be a terminal, and one person would run the HR, the safety, the maintenance, everything out of that terminal would be in charge. And that's what Mario does when he handles uh, three different regions. If I get the month in Halifax, to Berlin, to New York, yes. four different provinces. Four different provinces. So they're in charge of a lot of stuff. So from a, if you could ballpark and figure what, what it's done for your time and your efficiency, if you could put a percentage number on, on how that's helped you become more efficient. It has simplified my, th my life quite a bit. And on time-wise, when it comes to dedicating time to do trip orientation or remedial training, 50-60% time saving. It's huge. Uh, allows me to do other parts of my job that take up more time as well. Um, what has been your biggest challenge implementing the Scrum Master Plan? Um, putting the program together, our content together. That was the hardest part. More working with my colleagues, making sure they do it right. We had an incident. We, we had a new hire, as a, uh, one of my colleagues. He uh, was shown quickly by one of my other colleagues on how to assign uh, something to an individual. And he didn't follow the procedure. And he clicked all the wrong things. I ended up with 1,300 emails in an hour span. <laughs> <laughs> so, so did my boss, and so did all my other colleagues, and so did Ed. <laughs> So that was my biggest challenge, was getting my colleagues on board. And what happens when you know, somebody new, new comes on the team? How do we get them up to speed? Because I'm in Moncton, New Brunswick. I got a colleague in Memphis, a guy in Detroit, a guy in Chicago. How do, how do those guys get up to speed on this without them physically or, uh, or doing webinars? It's, that was, if everybody's at one spot on site, it's, it's a no-brainer. Something I've been thinking about, um, I don't know if you do it at all or the responsibility of it, but as part of the pre-screening process, when you're looking at a new hire, do you feel maybe you use this content to be able to sort of evaluate by assigning various modules to an individual on the Hired. I have to say no because yeah. our situation is different. Right. I have uh, probably on my desk right now, I, I probably have 20 names I could call. If I'm hiring tomorrow, I could get 20 guys tomorrow. And right. there are guys that have been driving and working for other companies. In different parts of the country, we're one of the more desirable companies for an owner operator to work for. And what happens a lot of times is the owner operator drivers, the replacement drivers, next thing they drive for somebody for a year and they know exactly how our system works, they end up taking the next step. You know, a guy who right. never thought he'd own a truck goes up and gets a truck and he's uh, so I could see how that you could weed out your guys that uh, don't work out right because if, if they're not willing to put that commitment into doing a couple modules before. You meet up with them. Okay. You didn't want to take the, you know, especially the infinity modules. They're, they're, they're fast, to the point, they're concise, they cover, a, you know, a couple of those, and they didn't want to take a half hour to do them. They don't want to commit a half hour yet. You want to commit thousands of dollars in bringing them on? Exactly. Any last questions? All right, Mario, thank you so much.